for Billy T, grilled steak and a fish cooked Aboriginal style for John. Mm, that's how he likes it, straight from the water onto the coals. The only hold up is waiting for it to cool. No frills either about this meal of good homegrown beef. They eat it three times a day in one form or another. Out of the water, everybody, calls Mum. Though there are always meals to be cooked for hungry children, it's holiday time for Mrs Marsh too. With no correspondence lessons to supervise, she'll have a few weeks rest from teaching the young ones and can spend some time with her older children, Helen and Richard. Rainfall in Kimberley is more reliable than in many parts of Australia, but sometimes the monsoonal storms are delayed or are too light to fill the pools and bring good grass. Cattle are not always sensible about finding water for themselves, so as pools dry up on one part of the run, the stock must be moved to another site. Conservative in their habits, they will often die around dwindling waters and eaten up plains rather than move from a familiar watering place. Mr Marsh has arranged by Transceiver Radio for the meatworks to take delivery of a mob of Calaroo Down shorthorns. The old method of droving cattle to market has now given place almost entirely to transport by road trains. Stations now walk their cattle only as far as the nearest trucking depot. Each trailer holds up to 20 head of cattle. They take their long journey quite calmly and being fairly closely packed, steady each other over any rough surfaces. On long journeys, the trucks pull up at intervals and the stock are watered. This method means a tremendous saving of time in getting stock to the meatworks, but also ensures that the cattle arrive in good condition. Mobs that once took two or three weeks to get to market now arrive within a day or two. Kimberley cattle are offloaded at meatworks either in Broome or Wyndham. Seasonal employees operate the works between May and September. The beef, which has been examined and graded by Commonwealth meat inspectors, is prepared by the butchers for sale overseas. Prime beef for the American market is first boned and then trimmed of all surplus fat. These butchers take a pride in the product they handle and in the speed and efficiency of their work. Presentation is as important in this as any other industry. The meat must be packed carefully in polythene to prevent spoiling under refrigeration. Each box should contain 60 pounds of steak. Gross weight, 63 and a half pounds. The meat, weighed, labelled and wired, will then be stored in freezers until the arrival of the next meat boat. Brought to the wharf straight from the freezer, the meat has no time to thaw before being unloaded and slung into the freezing hold of the ship. For the five months of the bullock season, the meatworks and jetties of Wyndham and Broome will be kept busy as the cattle trucks bring in their cargo of Kimberley beef. Out on the lonely cattle runs, the musterers will ride the plains gathering in the cattle sending off the marketable beasts, branding and husbanding the growing stock, the year broken by the coming and going of the school children. Helen and Dick are returning to Kananada in the small aircraft that serves the stations in the area, there to connect with the holiday special returning children to Perth.
Goodbyes are always difficult, but the next holidays are not so far away. Mrs. Marsh knows that when the plane calls next week, there'll be news from the children from Perth. So it's goodbye to Helen and Richard and the end of their Kimberley holiday. <laughs>